Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today I thought we'd have some fun uh, with watercolor. Uh, I've been playing with some different kind of color palettes. I tend to gravitate towards a specific kind of palette and I kind of get in that rut where I'm always using the same colors. I'm just drawn to those colors at the time. And as I evolve through my art or experimentation, I might gravitate to different palettes. But uh, what I wanted to do was kind of explore color combinations and and have some fun figuring out what I like and what I don't like. Um, so. Well, before I show you these, one of the ideas that I came up with was just to go into your local paint shop and kind of let the professionals give you some color palette ideas. So you can go in and collect these um, these type of uh, take-home books or paint chips. You can get a bunch of paint chips, some colors that appeal to you, and maybe a couple that are outside your comfort zone. And you can play with these color combinations that these... Uh, professionals have put together now these are for home decor of course but they're still uh, they still kind of make you look at colors in a different way and I really enjoy these books because uh, I find they kind of force me outside my comfort zone and then I'll take these color chips I'll I'll take these and I'll cut them out and then what I do is I'll glue them the little color chips together in combinations that I like, or maybe experiment with colors that I'm not sure that I'll like and come up with different palettes. So I've been playing with that idea quite a bit and just putting together these experimentations with watercolor. So we're not gonna do this today because this you can do on your own, um, just to play with colors and the way the colors can lay down uh, with water and saturation. Uh, maybe we'll do a video on that uh, a little later. I'm not sure. So this one, I did the color saturations using the palettes that I chose and then playing with how they're applied to paper and building up patterns just for fun. So this one kind of laid out like a landscape, which I thought was really neat. It's kind of like a, wa a winter landscape. And uh, again, just picking these colors out from those little booklets really kind of forced me outside my comfort zone in a way. Now I still gravitate towards the browns and the blues. There's, I can't, I can't seem to move past it, which is okay. You know, what you like is what you like. I got my stuff all falling down here. Drive me nuts. <laughs> um, so what you like is what you like. You're drawn to the pastels, you're drawn to the blues and the pinks or the, the greens, whatever it is. But again, you can force yourself to try the one of maybe your favorite colors and apply it to a color you wouldn't normally use. So here's some samples. Uh, let me find that one I just put away. Sorry, uh, where is it? So here's some samples that I painted using this color blocking that I did from these little color chips. So this combination here is this one. So I chose these kind of greens and blues and the dark, the uh, Payne's gray. So I played with that and I came up with a couple. And they vary as well because of the saturation of the color of the pigment you're using can also vary. And also you can mix, say, these two together and create a whole new color. So a lot of fun there. Uh, I did the pink and the green, this guy here. Um, now the pink was a different pink than I had. I think I add white. I think I added white to this one. I didn't add white to this one, but still came up with some really fun color combinations. And again, this is I'm not drawn to pinks and reds, but using this kind of soft green uh, made me enjoy painting it. So again, using some color that I do enjoy. And here's my typical brown and blue, which I believe was this one. And here it is here. Again, just playing with the saturation of the colors with some random sketches. So you can see the difference that you can get with a very soft saturation and a strong concentration of paint and uh, how, you can, how you can play with those effects. So here's another contrast here. So again, even taking that palette and exploring it further uh, by how much water you use and how much paint you use and how you apply the paint uh, can also be a lot of fun to experiment with. So here's some others. This one got a, this one got away from me a little bit. But 
I thought we would do that today. I thought we'd have some fun with that. I'm not sure what colors we're going to pick. I thought maybe we would pick something with a, that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to move those out of the way for a second. I thought we would take this kind of orange, green, and blue one I really like. Of course, it's got the green and blue, but instead of the brown, I think I used an orange in that one. That's the problem. I didn't write down the colors I used. Lesson learned. I think that could be fun. Or this one here. Let's try this one. It's kind of fall colors, but uh, could be fun to try. So let's give it a go. I'm going to leave that beside me here so I remember what I'm doing. Just to show you, I am using this uh, Fabrino. It's 140 pound, 300 GSM. Uh, 9 by 12 inch watercolor paper not the super best watercolor you can buy but it it is a half decent quality so it can take a lot of abuse uh, something to bear in mind too when you're experimenting you want a paper that can absorb you playing with it over and over again um, you don't want to go with a cheapy cheapy watercolor paper because it will break down too quickly and I'm going to use my what are these uh, the Mei Liang uh, watercolor paint set that I got. And I have done a product review on that if you wanted to check them out. I have a number 10 Derwent round watercolor brush. And I would also recommend with this experiment to use a watercolor brush. Just because you, wanna, you want that ability to remove paint with it uh, as well playing with that. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then my Archival Ink Micron 0 0.03 waterproof um, pen we're going to use. So I'm just kind of sketching out of my head here. I'm not doing anything too serious. I just want to play and get some paint down. So you can either slow me down or use a stamp if you're not into sketching. Or you just really want the exercise to be more about watercolor than it is about the sketch. Go ahead and stamp something that you want to try painting. Uh, just make sure you do it with an archival ink. Not archival, sorry, with a waterproof ink. They are two different things. And uh, that way it won't bleed on you when you go to paint it in. So with my ones that I just showed you I did sketch over top of them when I was done because I personally like that look of the sketch but if you don't like the ink and you want a very soft look then go ahead and um, do it in pencil and a light touch and then it won't be quite as obvious and again I'm just pulling this from my head here uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing <laughs> so bear with me. We'll just doodle and experiment together. And these are really fun exercises. Um, one, they kind of teach you how to use watercolor in a, in a non-stressful way because you're not creating a masterpiece. You're not got this daunting, huge piece of paper in front of you and thinking, okay, now I've got to turn this into a painting. These are smaller, what I call thumbnails. They're tiny little pieces. Um, and they can be reused over and over again. They can be cut up, they can be photocopied, they can be sketched over, painted over. And then I find I have a lot less pressure on myself to perform something perfect. And so these little exercises are really good. So it teaches you how to use watercolor paint. It's a great way to experiment with different papers, um, different Pa uh, paints if you're lucky enough to have a few painting options say you have a few different brands of paint because each brand will offer something another brand won't so you kind of experiment and see what what you like and what you don't like and the only way to do that is to actually do it I could tell you what brand I use but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the brand that works for you so these little exercises here are wonderful for that. And I am just sketching some kind of pretty random leaf design here. I'm going botanical because I love botanical. But you can go completely organic here. You can go abstract. You can go any way you want. Okay. And then over 
here, maybe another kind of flower. And I'm just scribbling. I don't have any kind of flower or plant in mind. These are just me doodling. So sometimes my doodles work out and sometimes they don't. And then one I might start and think, oh, that's terrible. And it might be my favorite by the end of the painting. <laughs> Just relaxing. Don't forget to breathe. Kind of close your brain off to other things and just focus on the task here. Maybe you're painting along with me, which would be great. I would love that. Always loving the feedback I'm getting that uh, people are trying it or maybe they were a little too nervous to try it at first, but now they, they can see through this video that it's not quite so intimidating to play with watercolor. Okay, so there we go, some sketches. So now we'll bring our color palette in. I'm gonna figure out what colors to use. So we'll use this bright colors here. So I think I did have my, here it is, my little legend here, which goes this way. So, um, I think it's going to be the cadmium yellow we'll go with. And then I think we'll do a cadmium red or maybe, let's go cadmium orange. Though I think this might be um, yellow sienna. We're gonna have to play with that a little bit. And then this one can be the Van Dyke brown, I believe. So let's try those colors and see what we get. I'm going to clean off my palette because I'm notorious for making a mess. Move my palette's in screen here. Just got some water. Just got to wash my... Could have done that before I started the video, I guess. <laughs> All right. There we go. So, what did we say? We said cadmium yellow, which is this guy. I think probably going to be I think it is going to be the sienna so this is yellow sienna it looks like it's going to be that yeah instead of orange and then maybe this one which is the van dyke brown so there's our color combination and again this is where you can play too you can you can say, well, maybe I do want to use an orange. Let's just try it for experiment. So I'm going to put orange. Put the yellow. And brown. So there's those three colors. So the orange is pretty similar. I think we'll go with the orange just for fun. It's brighter. I'm in the mood for orange. So I'm just going to wet it. Hopefully my palette is in here. And then I'm just going to play. So this is a wet on dry. So my brush is wet, my paper is dry. And I'm just gonna throw the color in. So there's all kinds of painting watercolor approaches you can do. It's very loose, there's very strict, there's wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on dry, wet on, did I say wet on wet already? Probably. But there, that's part of the experimentation as well. Just having fun experimenting with these colors and how to apply them. I'll switch it this way now. So on this one, I think I'll do maybe the background a little bit more orange. And again, just nice and loose. So when you're playing with color, you can experiment with the intensity. So for example, I could really saturate it with some more, or you can add more water and desaturate it. So all kinds of fun things to try. 
watercolor is really one of my favorite things to play with. I'm not a watercolor artist by any means. I don't do the science behind the watercolor. I haven't done the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The research and the experimentation in, in the sense of how colors blend and how they react to one another. Mine is just trial and error. And that's the way I like to play with this. If I, if for me, if I'm restricted by what I can do or how I can do it, I lose interest. So with watercolor, I just go, well, bonkers. I just go in there and do what I want. And either it's going to work or it's not, but it, it's just really loose and relaxing for me. Okay, so I've put some orange in. I think I'm gonna go with the yellow now. And we'll maybe put some yellow in here. Let's do a wet on wet this one. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna put in the water where I want the paint to sit. So you can really take your time and saturate the area you want the watercolor to sit in. So you kind of really stay in the lines. Just gonna soften those before they dry. And really just have fun putting the water where you want the paint to go. And the more water you use, the different effect the paint will have. And then you just kind of drop the paint in. This is a really fun technique for botanicals. When you've got a really loose kind of structure to how you want the botanicals to look. If you want to do something more realistic or um, really pay attention to the detail, this is, this is a fun way to do that. The, uh, sorry, this is not for detail. This is just for fun. For detail, you want more structure. This is, you're just dropping color in and seeing what happens. I totally said that backwards. <laughs> Trying to paint and concentrate. So this, you can see, I don't have a lot of control on where this brown is going. I'm letting the paint do what it wants to do. And in this case, it kind of sits. And I can intensify the color more. Let's put some of that orange in. So I'm going to mix the orange in with the brown and drop that in. See what happens there. And then you can let things dry in between. You don't have to paint it all at once. Come back to it when it's dry and see what you like or don't like. A little orange in the stems here. So this color palette is pretty, pretty even. The yellow and the orange are quite the same. So we're not going to get a high, super high contrast of color here. We're going to get a really nice soft effect, which I kind of like. Let's throw some of this orange brown in here. And then I might soften it a little bit coming off. Just add a soft background color. We thin it out. So a, a deep blue would really ni be nice in this palette. <laughs> so you can see how you start. I keep again keep gravitating to my blues and browns, but uh, I've gotta I've gotta say no. I'm going to just be like, nope, you said you were going to do this, so you're going to do this. I'm just going to put some random color here. And then I'm going to go to my cadmium yellow. I'm really going to saturate these bright yellow. Really pop the yellow. You can see I don't stay in the lines. I do, sometimes I do intentionally. Other times, I like to go outside the lines. I was that kid in school where my coloring skills were considered terrible because I went outside the lines. Until I got to high school where my art teachers 
more encouraging thinking. Good. You're thinking outside the box. I like it. So don't let anybody ever tell you you're not good at something because <laughs> it's really just an opinion. <laughs> All right. So we can go a little more dramatic. Let's maybe pop this sky a little bit. So let's go to our brown. And we'll really put some color down. And let's put some. So here I have lots of pigment and a pretty dry brush. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. It's a bit too dry for me. I'm going to really saturate the base of these leaves. And then what I like to do is rinse my brush and roll it in the paper towel. And this is where the watercolor brush comes in handy. So you can see how it starts, it kind of removes color. So you can lighten a spot back up. If you've put down too much pigment, there is a way to remove it. You do have to have a half decent quality paper to do this as well. If you have some kind of cheapy paper, it won't let you do this too much before it breaks down. And what I like about this effect is how it leaves these kind of dried edges around. I think that's really fun. There, so as you can see, I saturated it, and now I've softened it by removing it. Something a little different. So let's put a yellow flower up here. Again, just saturating some spots, not staying in the lines or anything. Very loose. You kind of let the drawing pull out a little bit more detail than the color. And then we'll play with some of the browns. And then maybe we'll make a, a deep orange brown. Put some orange and then I'm gonna throw on that brown and it makes a whole other color. So this is definitely out of my comfort zone because I don't gravitate to orange very often. I'm just going to take my brush and wet the edge here so it dries a little softer. All right. Let's put some yellow in this guy now. So not a super high contrast of color in this. I think in that sample I have Payne's gray, which I think I'm going to use. The brown is nice, but I don't I don't find the sand, um the contrast high enough, so I'm going to add another color which is the Payne's gray just so I have a little bit more contrast. I have a little bit of a deeper color. It's still that brown, that Van Dyke brown, but it's got a little something to it now, just for a contrast. I'll drop that right at the front here, at the bottom, the base of these leaves. And just throwing it in, having some fun. Let's let that dry and see what happens. So maybe I'll take that orange, really a strong saturation of orange, and pop the bottom of these ones. So this one has very little bit of water in it and a very strong concentration of paint. So more like a gouache in a way than a watercolor. 
Uh, I love gouache. I don't have any. I'd like to try it again because it's quite expensive nowadays. But it is a fun uh, um, product to use because it's pretty darn versatile. So it can act like a watercolor and can act like an acrylic paint, which is a lot of fun. And then I think I'll just add just a little something around the edge so that when I peel the tape away, it feels a little bit more completed to me. I just personally like that look, that's all. Maybe a little brown here. But you could leave it white, of course. Just something. Okay, this is really pretty against the white. Really quite like that. But we need to add a little something to it to play with our, our palette here. So I'm just gonna add some more Payne's Gray to this mixture and give it a little bit of detail. Well, again, some more contrast. You can have fun splattering. Add a little splatter to it. There's some drama. Pop more of orange. So I'm putting the saturation of color down and it's wet on, mm, you know, some spots are wet, some spots are dry. And then I will take my clean brush and I will just kind of soften that out. All right, maybe use this dark color here instead for these flowers. It's kind of got a 70s vibe, this painting. <laughs> I guess it's the orange and browns. Put a few more of the flowers in. Seeds or whatever these are. I'm gonna start like how this one's drying. Put some splatter in there while it's wet. Just for fun. My other ones didn't have any splatter. I uh, didn't get right into it. I feel like I do need to add some blue or green or something. Pink or red. It's a nice soft palette, but I want some drama. What should we do? Should we add some red in here? Some pink? Well, let's play with everything. I mean, why not? So this is, I believe, turkey blue, it's called. So let's put some blue in this guy. So as I put blue and orange together, it's probably going to create a kind of brown because you're mixing your three primary colors together. But with watercolor, so like in oils and acrylics, you'll, you'll get a lot of mud doing that. But with watercolor, you can get some really beautiful colors. So here it is turning more of a green than a brown. And that's the beauty of watercolor. Now, if you've been watercoloring a long time, you're going to know what you're going to get. When you're like me and just learning, you have no idea what you're going to get. And it's kind of fun. So I'm just going to take some of that off. Kind of expose that color underneath and I love that look because it, it makes the paint kind of transparent and the overall effect of a translucency to translucent translucency is that a word I don't think so but you know what I mean <laughs> so adding that blue We've now created this really pretty kind of green halo. And that's where the experimentation gets really fun. You just don't put any pressure on yourself to produce a masterpiece. Just think, oh, okay, I really like this blue. I'm going to throw it in and see what color it turns. And in this case, it turned a bit of a, a bit of a green color, which is pretty, right? At least I think so. Now you can wait and come back while it's dry and then throw a, 
a hit of that bright blue in there. Okay, let's try another color in this one. So let's do, let's do a red. So this one will be a, oops, open that up. This one is, if I can line it up properly, I believe it is a cadmium red. Or maybe scarlet, I think it's scarlet red. So it's got a bit of a orange vibe to it, a pinky orange vibe. Let's put this in here, see what happens. Concentration of it. So it's still within that family we've been playing with. It's not much of a contrast of the color palettes we've used. It's in the same kind of side of the color wheel. But it's given it a nice kind of warm look to it. And then maybe we could pop the yellow more in the background. real concentration of yellows. Have that blend and see what happens. Just throw it in there. I think we need a contrast of this Payne's Gray and the Van Dyke Brown. I have to wait till that dries so it doesn't end up everywhere. Okay, we'll come back to that one too. Let's do this one. So how about a purple? I'm not a huge purple lover, but the contrast of purple and yellow is really quite pretty. I complementary colors. Are they complementary colors? I'm trying to think. No, blue and yellow, I believe. No, blue and orange. Yeah, so yellow and purple. Geez, I had to think about that. <laughs> so complementary colors are the opposite on the color wheel. So opposite of red will be green. Uh, so, yeah. All right, red and green. And I don't have color wheel in front of me. Red and green, yellow and orange, yellow and <laughs> yellow and purple, orange and blue. And you can you can take all kinds of really fun color theory uh, YouTube videos and watch them and and see how color can really be played with and manipulated for an overall effect. There's some real science behind it. So you see how like br bright the contrast is, and now it's kind of conflicting because they're they're complementary colors. So they're even though they're complementary, they're kind of they draw your eye to them at at the same time, if that makes sense at all. So you're looking at both colors at the same time. They they're striking. That's what they mean by complementary. I guess they they make they offset the color and uh, make you notice both colors at the same time when something more um, less dr more dramatic. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. Holy, that's terrible. I can't talk. Okay, well, I kind of like the purple. It's kind of fun. So if we add purple into our yellow, let's see what happens. Into our yellow-orange, let's see what kind of drama we get out of that. And the purple I used, sorry, was fresh purple in this palette. So let's put some purple in the leaves. I'm just going to throw it in here and then I'll take my brush and soften it. Because I don't want to, I don't want it too harsh. I like it soft. I like it when it kind of pools. Be 
go. Something completely different than when we started. That bright, bright yellow and white background. Now we have something very dramatic by adding purple. All right, this one, I think I, I like how it is. I just want some more contrast in it. So I'm going to add a little bit more dark in here. A little bit more Payne's Gray, the Van Dyke Brown. Just add a little bit more in here. And then I'll probably leave this one be. And then we'll let them dry a little bit while I peel the tape away. Now normally I would wait till the tape was dry. I mean the whole paint was dry. Let's throw some orange in here. This orange is just so pretty. Tangerine orange or something. It's just so delicious looking. Make that one dramatic. All right. I mean we can keep going and keep going, but I want to just try to give you an idea of how to play with color palettes here. We started off with the intention of using one palette <laughs> and then I kind of went off the rails. So this is washi tape. I reuse this washi tape over and over again. And I like it because it starts to stain different colors as well and then I use it in my journals so nothing gets wasted. All right, so the purple is quite pretty. Purple, I never, I never go straight to purple, ever. And there's some people who just absolutely love purple. But I'm really liking it with this orange. Okay, there's our little thumbnails. Really cute, I think, anyways. So then I would take my pen, and I'm sure you've seen me do this a million times in my videos, and I would just darken any spots that I want popped. So the stem, for example, I'll darken. Now you do need this dry. You'll ruin your pen otherwise. And this is the look I like out of my watercolor. It's not something you have to do. It's just a look I like. These are still a bit wet. You can add dots to this. You can use your Posca pens and create more, which I've shown in other videos on how to add kind of textures to your watercolor. Yeah, these are still pretty wet. Let those dry for a second. I'll go back to the ones I've done. So here's the blue and rust color. And this is a really good example here. So these colors were the uh, what was it? The fresh blue? No, it was the Parisian blue. And then I added the Sienna. And when I put the Sienna on, when I first put it on, it looked like gold. It was so cool. And it still has a bit of a gold vibe to it. But the warmth of it against the contrast of the cool blue is just one of my absolute favorite combinations. I'm always drawn to it. And again, just playing. So that is the exact same color palette only a very light saturation so you can see the variations you can get so just play with your colors play with um, color combinations put together in your little watercolor book these kind of uh, watercolor combination color palette ideas and play with it and it will force you outside and now i'm drawn i'm kind of more drawn to the purple where i might experiment more with a purple in my journals or in my artwork just because I, I've played with it, I really like adding the purple to the orange and, and seeing this pretty brown that you get. Or the blue to the orange and seeing this green it creates. So really have fun with it. Enjoy the process. I hope this helped kind of give you an idea. I don't make the most instructional, you know, organized videos. I am more of a fly, uh, fly by the seat of my pants kind of uh, tutorial, tutorial YouTuber, but that's my channel i'm always experimenting trying new products trying new colors and um, i hope you enjoy it if you do uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any and we will see you again in the next video all right guys take care bye